the king dies, I'm the gamest in the land. I never play nice, I'm the devil's right hand man. Hello and welcome to Video Game After Live. I'm your host, Joe Lungi, and joining me today are my panel of experts. Uh, Dean. Noah. And Michael. And we've got a very exciting show for y'all today. This is actually our new recruits episode, basically. Y'all are freshmen, right? No. No. Uh, no. Oops. Uh, stop. <laughs> Never mind. All right. Sorry. I am. Sophomores? Uh, Sophomore. Yeah, sophomore. I, I, I'm a freshman. Great. Okay, I'm a freshman. Basically, these are the new recruits to the station. We're going to get some new blood in this podcast finally because we're tired of hearing of the same old opinions every single week. We can finally talk about something new. Get some new perspective. Or new same opinions. We'll see. Yeah. yeah. There's a slightly different tone to it. No, it's going to be good. It's gonna this be is going to be okay. the best episode yet. I can feel it. It's going to be healthy for our relationship. Yeah, we're going to have a healthy relationship. As good as the Ghost Recon episode. But first, we need to break the ice, as is the VGHL tradition. So for this week, I've decided to play a game called Is This a Real Video Game Name? Ooh. I think I'm oh, good no. at this. Oh, the God. rules are simple. God I will damn. read to you a name, and you tell me if this is a real video game. I'm We're right. going to go in a circle, so you're going to tell me yes or no. Don't let other people sway you. It's going to be hard. Follow your heart. You're going to earn a point if you get it right. I'm going to institute a new rule. No, no you're not going to lose a point. You're just going to keep normal points. It's fine. Just <laughs> one point if you get it right. We'll see who wins. I might know a lot more of these than I should, because there, I scroll through the Steam market just looking for games people. I'm never going to play. <laughs> You'd be surprised. I do, I do browse a lot, too. <laughs> there are 12 games total, so let's get started. We'll okay. start with Dean. All right. You're all going to answer this, but he's going to answer first when we go clockwise. Uh -huh. okay. So, the first game, Indigo Prophecy. I think is it's this a, game. a game. Yes. 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 This is a real game. We're starting off easy. Yeah. Game number two, Corrosion. Yes. You answer last. Oh. <laughs> oh but that's okay. You said yes. I'm going to say no. I, I feel like it, there's got to be some game named Corrosion out there. I'm going to go, yeah. Noah's correct. There is not a game. Let's go! Corrosion. I remember a video game where you had, like, you had the ability to manipulate the terrain. I felt like that game would have been called Corrosion, but I'm I'm totally wrong. There is not yeah, a game here. called. There's <laughs> a game with like subtitles under it's like Corrosion, some other bullshit. But you know what? No, it's not Corrosion. Goddamn. Game number three. Um Jammer Lammy. <laughs> um Jammer <laughs> Lammy. You it's sure, not, why not? <laughs> it sounds too made up to be But fake. it's so made up that it might be real. <laughs> I'll, I'll go with yes. No, what's your answer? I'm going to say yes. Everyone with yes, that is another point. That is a real video game for the PlayStation 1. It's yeah. a rhythm game. Awesome. Really? Pretty good. People like that game a lot, actually. Really? That game oh, is yeah. just really stupid. <laughs> yeah. Game number four. Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Shadow Wars. No. 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 That's a real video game for the Nintendo, for the Nintendo DS. DS? Oh my god. Shadow Wars. That's like Star Wars Why would you make a Ghost Recon for a DS? That one no, sounds so I, shitty. <laughs> I, it's been done. Like, I, I remember this, like, Tom Clancy End War. There's Wasn't a lot that? of Tom Clancy games. I did my research. There's mm -hmm. Tom Clancy Fuel of War. So, no, you're at two points right now, right? Everyone else? No, no is at three, everyone else is at two. Yeah, yeah I, think, okay. I think so. Game number five. So Gradient Historia. Who goes? Noah. Mm. Gradient Historia. Yes. I'm going with no. Can I go with both? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go with yes. It's not a real game. Oh, hey, you hey, hey, hey. Me know. It's a game near and dear to my heart called Radiant Historia. Uh -oh. so there's no such Gradient Historia. I'm going to go home and make some of these games just so it's right. <laughs> just, just out of spite. They'll just be really bad games. Yeah, they'll just fine. be Unity. Radiant Historia is a great game. I don't know what you're talking about. No, no, no I'm going to make a game called Gradient. It, it, it's, it's just, just different like shades. Hey, guess what? It's just a game of different shades, like the history of different shades. Oh, yes, yes. Number six. Okay. Dragon's Dirge. 
Yes. I've heard of a game called Dragon's Dogma. Yes. That's a game. Yeah, that's a game. That, that I'm going to say game. no to this one. I'm going to say no as well. It's not a real game. Fuck. Yeah. There's no Dragon's Dirge. God damn it. <laughs> I had to Google what Dirge meant. It means like a song for the dead people or like lamenting death or something. Oh, lovely. Yeah, I've, I've, I definitely uh, Someone should make before. a game called that. Dirge of Cerberus, it's out. Oh. Uh, number, number seven, Pet Shop Tycoon. No. Man, this sounds too good to be true. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm too familiar with I'm gonna say tycoon yes. games. There's so many tycoon games. There's got to be one in Pet Shop Tycoon, yes. I control alt deleted on the tycoon page. There's like 172 tycoon games. Yeah. There is not a pet shop tycoon. What? Oh my nice. I, would, I, I knew that, it. That doesn't seem I like knew, a bad I knew game. Like, tycoon, I, would play that. I knew Zoo Tycoon. I knew Roller Coaster Tycoon. There's a there is no pet tycoon. shop. There's, there's a, a prison, prison, prison tycoon? tycoon. Prison Tycoon. Yeah. I knew oh that. God. I almost, I almost bought it. <laughs> Evan told me it was too easy. Next question Beyond the Beyond. Well, I'm gonna go with yes. It's just a really bad game. That is the dumbest name I ever heard. I'm gonna say no. Yes. It's a real game. Oh hey. my god. It's a PlayStation 1 RPG. Whoever named that, oh my god, you're god. fired. <laughs> Score update right now. What's everyone at? Uh, like, I'm gonna guess four. You're gonna guess four. I'm, I'm gonna go with four. five. I think that was a this five. is scientific yeah. right now. I've like, oh, guessed right. five. five. Yeah. yeah. Wait, yeah. I'm, no, I'm gonna say five. Maybe. You're maybe. not all at five. Four. I think five. we're all tied. You know what? I think you're all tied. There we go. Yeah. yeah. I right. think I Clean slate. We should have wrote something down. You know. Maybe. It's fine. I'm gonna go back and post and get really mad. <laughs> <laughs> this is a professional. It's fine. Next up, The Lord of the Rings: The Battle for Middle Earth Two: The Rise of the Witch King. No. I've, I've played Lord of the Rings games in my time. There's been a lot of Lord of the Rings games is the thing. I'm gonna go I'm gonna go no. Does it count if it's a DLC? <laughs> Just your ass off DLC over does there. not count. <laughs> okay, so no. It's a real game. Damn. Damn. Come on. <laughs> God, <laughs> you're sitting there laughing the your ass off the, the entire Battle time. Battle for Middle Earth 2, The Rise of the Witch King. It's a right. real game. Again, it's, there's fire. too many like sub names. What? If you the have, Rise of the Witch King, King Part 17, The, the Search the for the Sword. God. Do you mad at the developer, not me? I'm, I'm mad at you. Next game. I'm just mad in general. Illusions of Fate. Yes. Yeah, I'm going to say yeah. Yes. Not a real game. Fuck. Not a real game. It's a book. It's not. <laughs> you were you were so it was too good of a name. It, it kind no, of I, 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 sounds like I'm totally like bullshitting this. So just go. <laughs> yes. Why not? Two to go. God damn it. Oh God. Oh. Noah, you ready? Yes. Infinite undiscovery. I feel like it's infinite discovery, and you just put on in there, so it's not. Once again, there are so many. How creative can I get? <laughs> we I just, don't know. We just heard that Lord of the Rings bow for fucking who knows what, too, is a real game. <laughs> uh, I'm going to say... Infinite Undiscovery. <laughs> no. Yes. That's just... No. It's a real game, uh, hey, uh, RPG uh, for the Xbox 360 uh, made by Square uh, Enix. Really? Yes. <laughs> Square. Well, what I were they thinking? You played it. Is it, really? <laughs> is it good? Not great. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't sound good. Is it pixelated? No. No. <laughs> Why do pixelated is not Xbox 360? It's well, like, no. Like the, the, you, you can play pixelated games. There's like chains, oh, and you got to cut the chains, and your guy plays a flute. That's about all I remember. <laughs> Sounds like Chains D &D and flutes. I broke the game. I got like this bug with my save, and I actually couldn't finish the game. So that's that's oh, how I my love story those. goes. Sunday. Final question, Michael. You ready to close it out here? Oh yeah. Attack of the mutant camels. <laughs> the fuck? Um, I'd play that. I would absolutely play that. Attack of the mutant camels. I've heard of a game. Very I'm gonna go with no. Title. I'm gonna go no. Yes. Oh, whoops. I'm gonna go with no as well. It's a real game. Come on. Fuck. For the I've, Atari 2600. I've heard I think, of I, think I win the, the whole thing because I got the last yeah. one. Here. So who's our winner, Chase? <laughs> Chase is the real winner. <laughs> Chase is the winner. Okay. To be honest, I should have been keeping track myself. I put too much faith. I put too much faith. <laughs> too you, much faith you, in who? You, you trust me, guys. I'm gonna go back guys. and post. We're gonna figure this out. Oh. 
I mean, you didn't really tell us to keep score, so... That's fine. You know what? That's on me. Okay. Yeah, that's on you. I but I think you. the ice has been successfully broken. What do you guys say? <laughs> yeah, I don't think it's Sure. Michael, tell me about Cuphead. You've been playing Cuphead. God fucking damn it, Cuphead. All right, so this game, it's amazing. I mean... Where you play bowls, right? Huh? Bowls? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's the game about playing as bowls. No, it's... Cups. It's like a running gun, like platformer, like 2D platformer, where it's a bunch of boss battles essentially. A boss rush. Yeah. It's just a boss rush. The game, and the animation and sound is just beautiful. It has like a 1930s cartoon art style to it, and it's all hand drawn. It's absolutely masterfully made, but god damn it, is it hard as hell? Is like, it hand drawn or is yeah, it oh yeah, it's animated all, to look? It's hand-drawn. all hand drawn. No, it's it's, 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 it's hand drawn animations. Hand-drawn. But yeah, it's hard as hell. Like you only have, unless you have add-ons, you only get you have three health the entire time, and sometimes there's just like twenty things on the fucking screen at a time that you have to avoid. Yeah, the game can just transform into what feels like a bullet hell. A yeah, it can be very bullet helly at times. Especially the levels that are basically become a bullet hell because you're like flying in a plane and you're just yeah, kind of they're around. Yeah, yeah. Do y'all think this is gonna be like a, a new type of genre of games that's gonna come out where it's like older styles but modern games? Because I mean, there's a there's a movie that does the same thing using the Van Gogh style of uh, painting. Depicting all of Inka's life. Mm. When you say older style, do you just mean like arcadey, hard kind of games? Yeah. Because I feel like we're in that now, and we've yeah. kind of been in that actually. I feel like we're yeah. almost emerging that, from right, that. I guess, that's, I guess that's my, my lack of playing video games is also a knowledge <laughs> as well, apparently. Not, just kind of like the <laughs> indie sort of renaissance we've been living in of just going back to these retro 2D 16 bit style games, like this overabundance now of Metroidvania. I, I think we'll yeah. see more indie developers have that kind of genre. But definitely we won't see like a resurgence in like more AAA industry. Definitely not. That's just too much of a niche-ish market. Niche-ish market now. I actually think if anything we're transitioning into sort of early 3D games for indie games kind of going in that direction. Like I look at A Hat in Time and Ukulele being like now the people making games are the people who grew up playing early PS1 and then 64 yeah. games. So that's kind of where their nostalgia is at. So I feel like we're going to start seeing more of those coming in soon. Yeah, you kind of have to look back a bit, like, okay, so all these people as kids, what were they playing now as they grew up, and now they're the game developers, like, okay, they're going to be making this stuff, and now they're going to be making this style. And, yeah, it's interesting, but, yeah, I don't think it's going to become, like, a major AAA. They're going to stay to their, like, you know, the best graphics they can put out, like, the best, like, sort of engines that they can run on, and just, like, try and keep that route right I'm now. I'm fine with that. Yeah, yeah, I'd say yeah. They have their place. Oh yeah, they're good. Yeah. There's always exceptions, of course. You have like even this year, there's a game like South Park, which looks like the show, which is kind of you know not necessarily the same, but games are generally gonna stay on that kind of big budget triple A yeah. look. Mm. But back to Cuphead, I mean, yeah. why is the game so good, Michael? What what are you so hooked on it? I think it it has to do with the difficulty and how hard it is. Do and you like how- hard games? Kind of. I play. I've only played Dark Souls three, and I mean, it was good, but I wasn't a big fan of it. Um, you had to make the Dark Souls comparison. <laughs> it's like everyone's Stop making it. a fucking Dark Souls. Cuphead <laughs> and Dark Souls very similar. Yeah, they're very similar. Yeah, I'm just saying. Well, you asked me about hard. Are exactly you asked the same. You asked me about hard games. I'm going to tell you about a hard game. I totally played. I, played Dark I'm not Souls. saying it's like Cuphead. I'm just saying you asked me a hard game. I played it. Sure. Like, sure. In terms of that type of hard game, not a big fan. But I've played through a lot of the Trials games, and those games, some of the challenges that they make you do can be insanely hard. Like on mm-hmm. the expert modes, like. Oh, you mean like a Trials Evolution? Yeah, like I where like the dirt bike platforming game where you have to beat like one of the hardest levels without faulting on like a shitty bike for the mm-hmm. entire time. And like I've done those and I think Cuphead kind of gets that the same way where it's like this kind of platformer kind of hardish style to it. Just trial and error like just a lot of trial and error more learning of the level and those quick resets to get yeah. back into it. I think those games actually have a lot more in common than like yeah. Dark Souls. Yeah, Dark Souls. Yeah. But, yeah. But I think one of the things that really makes it good is that Cuphead is very hard but it doesn't feel unfair. It feels like it sets everything very straight out for you and it doesn't like do anything sneaky to try and just kill you randomly. It doesn't feel overwhelming. Yeah, it doesn't feel very overwhelming, but it still gives you that level of difficulty to where if you're failing, it just feels like you just need to get better. It feels like if I just keep trying this, I can get better at it. And like there's just I need to 
there's no barrier that like, oh, I can never complete this because it's just, it just, there's no way. It's just impossible at this point. Like, you always feel like there's a way through the you, patterns. There's, there's always a way through the patterns. It's just finding it and then refining your movement so that you don't get hit all the time. Uh, and some, sometimes I, I feel like you get, you get that luck factor and I'm a very unlucky person yeah. when it comes to <laughs> games. And, and sometimes it, it just feels kind of unlucky how some projectiles get placed and stuff and you just get hit. And mm -hmm. it feels, sometimes it feels like you can't just dodge it. There's definitely bullshit moments where it's like, come yeah. on, like, yeah. what the fuck? Like, I, I uh -huh. say some very, very nasty things when I play this game, yeah. but I love it. I love it too. But, like, it makes me mad, and there are times yeah. I do feel like there's bullshit going on. <laughs> yeah. Like, when you say it doesn't feel overwhelming, I think there are moments where I just feel overwhelmed. Like, I was fighting, who was it? I don't know. Fighting the pirate dude the other day. I don't know how far you got, Michael. Yeah, oh, uh, the, is it, the, like, Inquile 3 is where the pirate dude is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I love that pirate fight, because the yeah, way they build those mechanics, it's like every phase they're just throwing more at you. And just keeps So adding, you're just keeps jumping adding. and jumping and jumping, and it's just like, that moment when you can break through and everything lines up right feels so good. But yeah. it, it took me a while to get it down. And it's even harder in multiplayer, too. Have you played any of the co-op? Uh, I have not played co-op yet, no. I have. How do you feel about it? It is just as hard. I if think it's not, way harder. Yeah, if not harder... Those, like, those sure, health pools get way bigger. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not only the boss's health are much uh, more. Um, it, it's also, like, a lot of people think that co-op is easier because you can just revive each other. But it, it gets, like, if your buddy dies and he's in, like, a real bad bind and you can't get to him, then he's gone. And there are times when it can cause you to take a hit because you're trying to save him. Exactly, and which can end up. up getting you killed, too. Yeah. I had this one fight, the dragon, and I did it co-op with a friend, and I swear, like, in the third phase, there are these bubbles that if you pop, it shoots this four-way directional, so we would just keep popping them and screwing each other over, and it would just... Oh, God. Oh, yeah, my God. Know that fight. It would kill me. It would kill me. Kill me inside. So, no, how do you feel about Cuphead, then? I, I concur with uh, Michael. Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. I concur with Michael about everything he said about it being... Challenging, but not incredibly hard to the point where it just gets incredibly frustrating to the controller throwing. It doesn't it doesn't get to that point for me usually. <laughs> How far have you gotten? I have gotten um, to. I haven't gotten very far, not as far as he has. I've gotten to that uh, castle, the candy castle, with that lady who takes her head off. Oh, okay, so the second world. world. Yeah, the second world. Yeah, I've only gotten to the second world. That that freaking. Balloon head guy, the clown. The, the, the clown. clown. That'd be the clown. the clown. Yes. Oh my god, it's irritating. Clown's a great time. Oh. Yeah. Dean, what do you got for me? What's um, your knowledge? I'm not. Head? I'm not a big fan of difficult games. I guess I'm a casual gamer. I don't like to label myself as that, and everybody always picks up casual gamers. But I guess I am. Well, I don't think. <laughs> I don't noob. think that's true. I don't think liking. I don't think not liking hard games makes you a casual gamer at all. Actually. Well, it's like I never play the multiplayer online of like Call of Duty or Star Battlefront or any of those games. I, I never play those because I get on there and it's just like insta death every time. Like, why? Yeah, why play that's, this? That's why I stopped call, uh, playing Call of Duty. I tried to play, like, I got Battlefield 1 and then I didn't have Xbox Live for a while, mm -hmm. which is what I mainly have Xbox. And then once I did get it, I got on the Battlefield 1, and like I'd walk in, immediately get sniped out of nowhere, and I'm like, well, why did I try? <laughs> <laughs> and then I got into a tank, and it was stuck, so I just oh, sat there and shot at the planes right above me, which was fine. I, I had fun, because they couldn't the get to me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was kind of boring. And like the hard games, if, if it gets boring because it's so difficult, I don't, I don't enjoy it. Like I've, I've played a lot of Skyrim. Mm -hmm. I like that game. Like, I can continually progress in that, but it's not extremely difficult to where I can't get past something. We had a conversation on the first episode about, like, how difficulty in games, like, how much it matters, kind of. And I think the conclusions we overall came to, or at least the ones I came away with, was that, like, it, it shouldn't matter. I don't think difficulty, like, equates to quality in a game ever. No. So, like, I also don't think there's anything wrong with playing games casually in the first place. Like, I think that's just how you want to enjoy the artistic medium, you know, like that's what you want to do. Yeah, I think some of the more interesting games, they don't have like a difficulty level, mm -hmm. but y like you gain levels, but they don't have a difficulty setting. As you gain levels, the, the characters you go up against and fight against, they also gain difficulty with your levels. So, so it's like always the same difficulty. Mm -hmm. yeah. it, it could be really difficult the entire game, which I mean, if it stays, stays consistent, it could be really fun. 
or it also could be really awful if it's way too difficult at the start and then it never gets better. Mm -hmm. So that's that's pretty good. Um, I played Diablo 3 and you can go back through the levels in, in increasing difficulties. And it increases the drop rates, right? Oh yeah, yeah. That game is uh, addictive until they took the was auction. Yeah, the auction they, house they, got they took shut the down. auction house off, and I stopped playing. <laughs> That's what did it for you. You couldn't yeah. sell your gold. Well, I couldn't sell the items I got <laughs> for anything, and I couldn't get good this items. This game is bullshit. I'm done. I You're totally, to I, I totally was. <laughs> I wasn't making real money. I was making good purchases. He, he had that side oh, hustle right. going, but then they stopped it. I hear you weren't making me real money, right? Yeah. yeah. No. Yeah. 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 No. Every gamer's dream to make money. But that's a really cool game that does cool things with difficulty. I love oh, the yeah. idea of like there being a reason to turn the difficulty up and you're getting a reward. Like There's yeah. higher stakes but higher payoff. You can't go up to the next difficulty until you beat that whole act in difficulty. That's like an interesting thing because it is kind of annoying sometimes to have to unlock oh, yeah. difficulty. Does that bother yeah. you? Do you wish it was just unlocked from the start? I don't know. I, I, I get both sides of it. I enjoy that they make you play through the entire game, but if it's too easy to start with, then it may be you do want to change the difficulty up a little more. Mm -hmm. But I also think you get to play through it multiple different ways and get to see different parts of the map. Especially uh, the like talking cow level. That's a secret level inside oh, the game. Yeah. Okay. That was enjoyable to go through. Especially when I, like, I joined my stepdad, who loves to play this game, I joined him, which he was like a higher difficulty than me. I was like, oh, okay, cool. We went into that, and I like got obliterated immediately because <laughs> I didn't realize that his level was higher than what I was playing on. Really? It was interesting. Gosh. The freaking unicorns and talking cows. <laughs> Diablo's good. Bad news. Diablo 2's oh good. I, I, I can't wait for Diablo 4. You think it's Hope, coming uh, soon? I, I, do you think it's going to happen? Actually, I don't know. I don't think they, with the success of Overwatch, and Blizzard's other games, they might not do Diablo 4 anytime soon. You think it'd be like a Valve situation where they just don't have to make anything anymore? They can just be platforms forever? I don't like Valve for that. They, yeah. maybe not like that, they just, they're making so much money on the Overwatch style of game, like, they just add new character and people drop money on it. Hearthstone's like, going so strong. <laughs> that too. A lot of yeah. people love Hearthstone. If they can make so much money on that, and they don't have to worry about World of Warcraft, Starcraft, Diablo 3, they don't have to worry about those games anymore, why would they do it? Why would they put the extra work into it to get less of a payoff? Yeah, at this point, they're just printing money with the games they got going right Honestly, now. It's yeah. just insane. I mean, I can only speculate, but I feel like there are people at that studio that are passionate, that want to make Diablo 4, that want to make the games. Yeah. I feel like Diablo 4 is a realistic thing that could happen. I want it to happen. Much more realistic than StarCraft coming back. I <laughs> never played StarCraft. Yeah. I've seen it, and I never got into it. Yeah. Blizzard makes good games. Oh, yes. We, yeah. we can agree on that. Yeah. So... With that out of the way, I, any other games you guys been playing recently you're dying to talk about? Because I've just been Cuphead. I haven't had time for yeah. anything else. Cuphead. I've been playing Destiny 2, and before oh, Destiny yeah. 2, I played XCOM 2 War of the Chosen. Tell me about War of the Chosen. Okay, so, are you familiar with XCOM at all? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Partially. All right. So, um, what War of the Chosen adds to the game, to XCOM 2, is it adds three factions uh, that... Are uh, they operate outside of XCOM, but they pretty much do the same thing as you do. Um, so each of these factions have special soldiers in them. Like you have the Reapers, who are specialized in stealth and long-range sniping as well, but they, they don't do as much damage as your normal snipers. So they, they work best as a stealth unit. And then you have these guys called the Skirmishers, which are really cool badasses. They, they can go to medium close range and they have this grappling hook that can not only grapple up to on top of buildings so they can get a height advantage, uh, they can also use the grappling hook to like attach it to a humanoid enemy like a, a, an alien or a lost, certain, certain ones, and then they can grapple them towards them and then just slice their throats. It's awesome. <laughs> so these are like factions you can choose to recruit to like yeah. join and list yeah, as your units. X XCOM is the game. It's kind of like a turn-based strategy, but almost first-person shooter -ish. No, no, it's, it's no, not first-person no. shooter, it but it's not. like uh, you're a third. It's third person, but okay, it's okay, like okay. it's like it one is... one group of people fighting another. Yeah. yeah, sure. Okay, it's like an isometric top-down view. You you look at your soldiers from the top-down view. 
It's very D and D esque if you control all the people on your side. I mean, yeah. I mean, in a sense, yeah. yeah. Sure, I sure. Like yeah. a lot of people like role playing in XCOM. Like, uh, mm. uh, they they get role attached to the characters. You can you can customize them. They have a lot more customization options, and and also the modding scene really fleshes out everything. It's 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 so good. What's the max number of units you can take? Is it five? No, it's into, six. It's six. Okay. Six is the maximum you can take. You can have mods to change that, but I wouldn't recommend it because that could ruin the game balance. Right, but the point is, it's like you've got these six XCOM soldiers, and you're trying to basically fight back against the alien threat, and then it's these overwhelming odds, and you feel like it's this hopeless situation. Yeah. Like if you want to talk about a hard game, like XCOM and XCOM Two will just oh, yeah. mess you up. Mm -hmm. They're just brutal. I love it. <laughs> but yeah, all tactical strategy game. You're like making dice rolls for hits, so it'll be like 90% chance to hit, and then you will miss, and then you'll be sad, and then they'll hit oh, like a 30%. Yeah. Don't worry, that, that happens very rarely. Happened to me a lot. <laughs> yeah. well, I've played a lot of uh, Civilization and uh, oh, Empire yeah. Total War. Those I, are turn based strategies, but on a bigger scale than XCOM, I feel like. But. I, I remember playing Civilization. You go to attack somebody, and always like it's like, oh, you have a ninety percent chance of this happening, and I've never had it have anything but what it tells me. Like I've never had a loss when it tells me a ninety percent. You tell me XCOM's bullshit. That's what you're telling me. No, I'm telling me. you. Yeah. Bull no, I'm with like, you, man. Yeah. XCOM's bullshit. bullshit. I'm telling you. Fuck that. Fuck it. I'm saying. Let's flip table. It's, it's, table. it's done. I'm saying XCOM. It sounds like they actually <laughs> do make it on per chance instead of Civilization, where it's like it's not chance. It's just what what it tells you is going to happen is what happens. The numbers are reliable. Yeah. I can trust the data. Yeah. I can't trust anything in XCOM. XCOM gives me trust issues. XCOM, get it, give it to you. I, I totally but you, 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 oh you tried to make nice. Please stop. <laughs> We're moving to the TPQ. This means thought-provoking question. This is a new kind of segment I've been testing out this season. Previously, we'd make a top five list, but Ooh. top five lists are really 2000 and late 2017. <laughs> We're over it. We're past it. <laughs> We're like talking about thought-provoking questions. Yeah. We want to get some substance into this podcast. Oh, boy. You know, get a little meat. So for the thought-provoking question this week, I wanted to talk about this fall because I feel like it's October, first podcast of October. We're in the thick of it. And October is traditionally like the busiest time of year for video games. Broke October, October, November, yeah. a little bit of September. Yeah. This year especially feels kind of crazy. Do you guys agree? I don't know what games are coming mm. out this month. I'm yeah. so out of the news and everything. I feel bad. I can uh, fill you in. But the point is, in a normally crowded month, it feels even more crowded. Yeah. And does this is this a good thing? Is this a bad thing? Do you guys enjoy this sort of overpowering amount of games coming out of generally good quality yeah. most of the time or expected? But just there's a ton of games coming out, and in 2017 in general, they just seem to be pretty good. And usually it's like confined to just fall, but it feels like it's been happening all year. Is Red Dead 2 coming out? No, 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 next year, that's spring. Spring. Yeah. They just Okay, some information must have just leaked. Yeah, the, the, the trailer. The yeah, the trailer, trailer just dropped. Leaked. But like a great example is this very month, on the same day, Super Mario, Wolfenstein, oh, and God. Assassin's Creed come out on the very same day. <sighs> which is, I actually do Creed. want the new Assassin's Creed. Everybody it says cool. Assassin's Creed games have gone downhill. This new one sounds like it's enough of a difference that I, I go get it. Do you feel like it's a problem that that game's coming out on the same day as two huge heavy hitters, so if you wanted to play them all, you really wouldn't realistically be able to? Well, Does that bother The other you? ones are Wolfenstein and Super Mario? Yes. I think... It's not I don't think it'll have a comp I, I don't think it'll have competition with the Super Mario game. Yeah, I, I feel think like those the, are different audiences. Yeah, yeah, they're different audiences. Wolfenstein, maybe. It depends on what the person has seen of the advertisements, I think. If they see Wolfenstein and remember the old the other Wolfenstein game and they're like, oh, I totally want that, I, and I they got burned by the Assassin's Creed game, yeah, I could totally do that. I didn't buy the last Assassin's Creed game because I knew it was going to be bad. Mm -hmm. This one, I've good. seen the trailers. It looks really good. I'd go get it. It okay. looks enough of a difference. But uh, I've not played the last Wolfenstein game. So okay. I, I, it'd be a risk good. for me, but I, it probably wouldn't be a risk. So you think it's okay that these games are coming out because different audiences, they're yeah. going to reach different people, and it's going to sort itself out naturally. Right. Okay. I think that it depends on who you are as a gamer. I mean, like, uh, yeah, as he said, there's going to be two different audiences who's like, oh, I just like the first-person shooter. I'm just going to get Wolfenstein. Or I just like the Assassin's Creed style game. I'm just going to get the new, the new one. But then where it kind of gets screwy a bit is when you're in the middle ground of like, well, I like both of these games. Like, 
I can only afford one right now, then you have to be like, well, I, like, do I like this more? Like, there's a lot of, which one will I get more time out of, which I think... You start doing the math in your head, yeah, like, you what's start being, the better investment? Yeah, like, I think, could, comparing those two games, you might go Assassin's Creed, because that usually has a bit more of a more open-world style thing, or Wolfenstein's a very, it's a linear first-person shooter. There's not as much exploration to it. I mean, but, I want to get Mario and I want to get Wolfenstein, but I'm not going to be able to do yeah, both. No. So, like... I, the question then becomes like, you're gonna miss that game. Is how it's gonna happen. It's, yeah. it's gonna be because we live in a zeitgeist society, so it's gonna be like the game is out, and for the next week, two weeks, three weeks, this is all everyone talks about, and then it's old news. We're talking about the new thing, and it almost feels like no one ever goes back. Do you guys ever go back to play a game you feel like you've missed? Do you think it's possible to do that, I go especially back in yes. such a, in I such go a back. time when it's like there's so much other cool, great stuff coming out, so you have to stay on top of it? Like, how do you stay afloat in an environment like this fall, even? Oh, even. Uh, well, it helps with being poor most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> being poor is your answer. Like, you can't. You can't do anything. Exactly. The, the only, I don't buy the only, any games. <laughs> usually, the only time I ever get games is birthday, Christmas. Okay. Usually. So you're uh, not buying anything this fall. <laughs> no, I am. Sitting like my birthday's this October. Oh, that's oh, well, then very convenient. There, there, there you go. Extremely convenient. <laughs> I I don't know. I if I miss a game, if it turns out like the reviews are great and I see let's plays about it, like it's amazing, I might get it early. But right. early as in a sense of if I do miss it and it doesn't seem like it was that great a game, but I'm still interested, I might wait until it's like on sale on Steam or something. And I think that worked in the past, but I think it's getting so much faster and faster now. Like you talk about, say you missed Wolfenstein because you picked up Mario, right? By the time you finish Mario, let's hypothetically speaking say Red Dead's out. Obviously that timeline doesn't uh, line up exactly, but I let's just Red say Dead. Red Dead's out. You're ready to move on to Red Dead. You don't have time to go back and get Wolfenstein, right. even if it's on sale, even if the price is cut. So then all this time goes by and suddenly you just never got around to it. Let's say yeah. even the next generation of consoles are out. Like it's just something that slipped mm, by yeah. you. Like do you think that's a problem? Is that just the way it goes? Is that okay? Like that that could be a problem. I, I see what you're saying. Like the next game that you want is out and you know it and there's no games competing with it. Theoretically, yeah. you're competing like, with yourself almost. Yeah, it's you're like competing. You can never, you're like, I you want this game more than I want, want that game, but yeah. at that time, I couldn't decide. Yeah, I, I could totally see that being a problem. Yeah, if, if it ever comes down to like, should I get this new game that I don't know if it's going to be good, or this older game where people have been saying it's good, but it's been out for a couple months, I'm probably going to go with the new game just because it's a new experience. Like, I don't have anything f spoiled for me at that point. Like, I'm going to be experiencing with everyone else. But if there's nothing out at the time and like, if you kind of get into like a game drought where it's like I kind of played through what I have right now and just like trying to bounce back, I might go back and pick up a game that came out a couple months ago, especially if it's on sale. I did that with Rainbow Six Siege. Like there was like a half off sale they did at, and after it had been out for like five months. So I was like, okay, I'll pick that up. And now like I play that all the time now. It's like, it, it's amazing. Funny so. thing about Rainbow Six Siege, I got that game off of a sale on HyperX uh, Cloud 2 headsets like it, it the game came with the headset and it was on sale for like 70 bucks and it was like hell yeah that's what's one hell of a deal and i've always heard good things about siege so i just picked that up and yeah. siege is one of my favorite fps's now wow yeah they're actually doing another bundle of siege where i think it's if you renew your xbox live subscription for like a year or so you get siege with it well that game especially is going strong and it's a bit of a different example i feel because it, it is a little bit more of a platform it's a game that continues on because it's got such an online presence yeah. and component to the game it's like all online it's totally different i feel in like a single player offline experience it's, it's amazing True. how they turn that game around from being a near disastrous release to now being one of the best PC games out there right now, or games in general. I mean, if you look at the trailers for that game, it's different than what <laughs> you're actually playing. Because, yeah. like, the entire environment is destructible in those trailers for the game, and now it's like, you can destroy, like, you can bust through these this certain parts of the walls. This just, wall yeah. and you, this wall. Yeah. That wall, that wall is pure steel. You can't do that wall. Yeah. Yeah. But that was never going to happen. I feel like we I, all I get why they, 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 they nerfed it issue. because it, it, the whole house would just be a pile of rubble. Yeah, when you think about scaling and leveling and stuff, the, the attacking team is going to blow Nuke up the everything. Fucking house. Yeah. You win. It, it would just That's be it. Battlefield 1 at the end of the game. <laughs> now, we're, now we're talking. <laughs> yeah. about it. There we go. We just want Rainbow Six Siege style <laughs> Battlefield. What, what a crossover. <laughs> but. I'm just wondering, do you guys go back to play old games a lot? Do you ever like buy an older game? How how far yes. back will you guys go? I've played Skyrim recently. It's not it's not that. I've played uh, Red Dead Redemption, the first one, which happened in what 2004. 
What thing? Red Dead Revolver. That it's, was a 2005 game, I believe. No, Red Dead Redemption. Wait, what? Redemption, I want to say, is like 2009. Yeah, that was like nine or so. Red Dead Redemption is 2010. Not is it? Nine. Oh, yeah, it's 2010. Right. That's yeah. right. Okay, I must be remembering a different game. Yeah. But was that your first playthrough? Like, you went back and got it and played it for the first time, or have you played it before? Uh, I, I think my first time I played it was... I actually played the zombie version of that game. Undead uh, Nightmare. Undead, Undead Nightmare. Nightmare. Really yeah, I, I, I liked it, and I was like, ah, I'm not the big zombie fan. I was like, I like the, the style of the game, so I went and got the original, and I played that thing all the way through. And now, like, I, I guess I lost the game, and I went back and bought it, and I played through the whole thing again. That game is replayable a lot. I enjoy it. Cool. Uh, um, Metal Gear Solid Five: The Phantom Pain. I got this game for Christmas 2015. I heard it was super good. I got my Xbox. I didn't like it. Then I came back a year later, tried to play it again, didn't like it. Then the perseverance. <laughs> third time. Then the I tried it a third time a couple months ago, I will like and it. I now love it. It clicked. Yeah, it finally clicked. You understand me. it now. Yeah. I definitely think there's like a time and a place where games click better and you're just not ready for it or something. I've had that experience with so many games. But I'm just kind of more wondering like, do you guys, like having never played a game, like you had Metal Gear Solid, will you ever seek out an older game and be like, hey, I've heard really good things about like Metroid Prime. I've never played this game. I'm going to oh, pick yeah. this up and order it. This I game really, is 10 years old. I really want to try Metroid Prime. Honestly, I've, so many I've, good things I've like that. went onto the Steam when they had those big sales, and I saw uh, Counter Strike. Never played it. I bought it. Still have never played it. <laughs> <laughs> I was so excited. We were going it. somewhere, like, and now I'm a Counter Strike pro. No, I, I still, I, I've not even installed it. Uh, I've mean, done that with a lot yeah. of Steam games. I'm like, oh, this game was is always great. It still has a big cult following, yeah. and I, I just didn't. For with with me, there was like a big Humble Bundle did like a massive thing. Uh, oh, yeah. I don't know I if it was Humble last Bundle. year, a couple months ago, where I got it. Like you had to pay like I don't know, like just some like five bucks or so for it, and then you got like thirty games with it. It was like one of their biggest ones they've ever done, mm -hmm. and that had like and like that was something for me where I got that like thirty games on Steam, and then. I went back and like played all these games that I've heard like they're really good. Like Super Meat Boy was on there. I'd never played that, mm -hmm. and that was like amazing. Another hard platformer. God, there were a bunch of like smart like indie titles on it as well, which like I don't know how old they were. Some of them might have been new, and some of them might a couple years older. But it's like I think if they're in a bundle form like that, like if it's cheap, then I can definitely see myself picking something up like that I've heard is good. Okay, because I'm just trying to gauge like if there is a second chance for games, like if a game gets brushed over or if you just have to miss out on it for whatever reason, how realistic is it that that game like, sees the light of day and that you actually can go back and see it? I think there is definitely a chance. I don't know. It would have to do with like maybe there's some sort of sale, maybe the price has gone down a lot. I don't think that I would reasonably buy a two-year-old game that's still like 60 bucks, mm. like having never played it before. I think that's a bit too much. If, if it's like definitely on sale, like half off or like like twenty bucks or something, I can definitely see myself picking that up. Okay. I, honestly, I go, I hate when I go to like the store and I see these games that came out a year or two ago and it's still sixty or seventy bucks. GTA like, Five is still sixty bucks. Honestly, yeah. GTA Five is sixty bucks, and I'm here like I don't want to put sixty bucks into it because they're about to shut down online. Like, why would I pay for a game where half Wait, of the game is what? about to be shut down? Yeah, game. yeah. They, they put out their, what, this last e expansion was the last one, and uh, they're going to shut it down eventually, shut down a whole online, so that they can put all of their resources into the next in game. In GTA 6. Mm -hmm. Or Red Dead 2. Yeah, Red Dead or 2. Red GTA Dead 6. 2 online, baby. <laughs> I really hope <laughs> All in that cash. Awesome. Get your shark cards. Oh. Shark <laughs> I think that'll be interesting. <laughs> no, 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 no. GTA... You can't like Buffalo. Cars. I mean, I guess you could you can blow <laughs> no. up cars. Yeah, it's gonna be safe. But it takes a lot more than just shooting it once to destroy a vehicle. You can blow up Red the Dead, horses in Red, Red Dead. Red Dead too. Yeah, you know, I can do that. Well, you shoot it once, and the horse should be dead. Just a well-aimed throwing knife can take <laughs> it out. Just a perfect explosion. Yeah, I wonder how the they're prairie. gonna do online in that. I mean, the last one wasn't too good. I, uh, I did, what? I, I played I, Red I Dead it, online but, but last like, time. Boy, it wasn't the best. I was like. 10 when that happened though, so. <laughs> or 11. So just kind of closing thoughts on the matter, feels like it's just kind of the way it is. It's just a busy time of year in yeah. a busy year in general, so things are just gonna get brushed aside naturally and yeah, I nothing really, can be done about it. I really wish I can play mm -hmm. all the new games, but you know. Yeah. 
money. I think developers definitely take a risk. Like they know that this is like this is like holiday shopping season. There's gonna be a lot of games getting bought this season, but they know there's the risk of this might get brushed over. I think like Titanfall two that happened with that. Mm -hmm. Like there was some I forget what game came out like right around it, but um, it was. Uh... Battlefield 1 yeah. came out a week before that, yeah. I think. And, and Call then of Duty was the week Call after Duty. that was Call of Duty Infinite Warfare. Yeah. Two juggernauts. So it's like you take that risk of where you put it out in the season where there's a lot of people buying games. Like this is the time where most people buy their games. But there's so many games where yours might get brushed over. So that might just happen. So you would suggest the way to fix this would be just push your game out to the spring or to the summer maybe? Delay a couple months that might I, work. Like even not even like a couple months, maybe just like January or February or something like that. Yeah, just, like mid January. Damn. I, I, I would disagree actually. Why? I feel like there's a there's a wave coming in of where we're gonna have these highs for games and especially movies has already got this where it's never ending blockbuster movies all year long. Every month it seems like there's some new blockbuster movie out. It's because there's so many more movies being made because there's so much more money in, especially like the uh, Marvel movies, all those. It's oh like God. they're making so much money off of those, they just don't stop. And eventually they're going to have a movie for every month. And I feel like that's slowly coming into the gaming world where they're making so much money off of it. Why would they ha limit their game uh, profits to just like one section of the year where they could have it throughout the entire year. Dean, you nailed it. That's exactly <laughs> how I feel. <laughs> really, no, because if you look at this coming year, even like January's already packed, February, March, you have juggernauts like Red Dead coming in the spring alongside like God of War and like Nino right. Cooney oh, got pushed to January. Like it's already work. crowded coming. So, like, where do you push your game now when it's just a non stop streak? Yeah. It comes out in 2019. You push it out of existence. That's what you do. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Just stop making so many games. Yeah. Produce You're just too many games. Pro Cancel. Produce, produce games for the Ouya. No. Produce games no. for the Ouya. The best console ever made. Oh, <laughs> God. That was a mess. <laughs> And on, oh. on that, I think we can call it the podcast. And, and on the high oh, note boy. of Ouya. Uh, this has been a great time. I hope you guys had fun. This has been episode three of VGAL. I've been your host, Joe. I'm Dean. This is the best episode. I knew it. Oh, all right. Uh, I'm Noah. I'm Michael. We'll see you next time.